Yo yo, what is up you guys? It's your boy Shotcomer and in this video we're gonna cover Dark Heart Ticket on a key level 22. Affixes are Fortified Volcanic Spadful. This was uh, basically done last week. Um, honestly, pretty nasty dungeon on Fortified Weeks, I would say. He has a couple of very important things to notice and the first one is this one right here. You see this bleed here? That needs to be healed above 90%, otherwise it will just keep bleeding and it does chuck. It deals a lot of damage. So you want to make sure that you're on top of the on top of your game uh, healing-wise, especially on the people that have the debuff. Second thing to note is you have to kill the Grizzly before he casts like too many times. I think two or three stacks is livable, obviously depending on the key but here luckily he only casted once so yeah damage was really good with this group uh that wasn't the issue at least not uh, on this first bloodless pool and this first pool is usually where in in my experience at least uh, a lot of that's happened so you know it will it looked pretty promising you know first pool without that uh, that was kind of like a feels good man you know and then here just dodge frontals there's like a few things that you can, you know, try to like interrupt and stun. Nothing too major though, in my opinion at least. But, uh, you know, obviously not letting things go through has a lot of value. So you definitely want to make sure you're on top of that. And honestly, like these frontals are mostly on tank. Like what most tanks do is they just point them to the wall and then they dodge themselves. It's pretty um, simple for you as long as the tank does that. So yeah, I just like to stay away to give myself a little bit extra time. I always struggle to see these frontals sometimes uh, when when like there's a lot of mobs and stuff, but here there's only three usually, so shouldn't be too big of an issue. I, I, I bet you can actually do a bigger pull here. I don't think this pack is too dangerous. The problem is there's not much to pull it with, so people tend to just do this uh, solo. Here you want to go to the left and do that little skip. I mean, not, I wouldn't call this a skip. It's just like a little bit of a fancy, fancy dodge of a dangerous pack. And then, um, you know, this pull happened a little bit too fast. Uh, Avoid. So one person died and then things just kind of... I don't know what we were Avoid. even trying to do here, honestly. Avoid. I think somebody pulled something we were not supposed to pull. And you can see me. I'm just AFK here. I just I just let, let the mobs kill me because this was just, you know not salvageable um you know happens moving on gonna skip ahead a little bit yeah and now we go a little bit safer you know we were kind of feeling ourselves on that last one i think tank was uh you know feeling like a big d giga chad and he is he is i'm not saying he isn't but uh, you know that probably wasn't the play especially not before half of your team is there and here the reason like i'm going for uh avoid you know, just kind of like uh, penance onto people rather than what I normally recommend penance into mobs is because two bleeds at the same time scare me. I really don't want people to die to that and luckily these people that got it have good defenses so it was relatively easy to kind of heal <coughs> because they pop their defensives. It, it really helps. Like popping defensive there, it might seem counterintuitive because it's like, well, it's fine. The healer needs to heal me anyway, lol, so it just goes away. Yeah, but sometimes buying that like one global or two globals extra for your healer can mean a lot so you know if you're a dps watching this video for whatever reason uh you know use your defenses when you get abilities like that same goes for the one on the first boss here same goes for the one on uh, waycrest manor any dot that like slowly ticks and requires like healing by default it makes sense to kind of be like well healer will take care of it but in reality Popping an offensive helps because it, it buys time for your healer to heal it up. Especially if you're playing with a disc, that will mean a lot because disc doesn't really have the greatest spot healing. Although we're not the worst either at the moment. I mean, maybe we are the worst, but we're not bad. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're the worst, though. I haven't played all the healers, so it's hard to say. But we definitely do have decent, self decent like single target healing. It's not the worst in the world. And here, you, you, like, if you're playing with a melee heavy comp, and there's a pretty high chance that that happens this season, this season is all about melee DPS, uh, you are probably gonna be the one that's gonna be taking this. But don't panic, guys, this is completely fine. Don't forget, you have Desperate Prayer, you'll have Fade for literally every single, every second one. You have two Pain Subs, so I would, like, recommend using, like, Pain Sub early and stuff, uh, so you can just farm it back by using your shields. 
Although we don't use shields that much, but yeah, you can pre-shield, you can use Desperate Prayer, you can just also heal. It's pretty chill, honestly, as you can see, like, really not a big deal. And then things kind of went south here. We lost two DPS um, to charge, which is just, in my opinion, pretty acceptable, but, you know, happens to the best of us, I guess. It happens to the best of us, and... Um, sorry, my cat is demolishing. Chat is demolishing my room, so I'm trying not to uh, get too distracted. But yeah, basically just, um, just, just that's it. That, that, that's basically the whole boss, honestly. Uh, you just make sure you don't die to frontal and you heal the... Uh, what is it called? Grievous Leap, yeah. You heal the Grievous Leap. leap. Uh, one, one thing that's also kind of interesting to mention is obviously these pools and stuff. They're very important uh, to kind of like try to leave them in the places where it, you're, you know, you're not gonna cover like the whole room obviously that's easier said than done but what you can do is you can like kind of like guide these abominations over already existing pools so technically i could have positioned way better than this uh i also would suggest especially on tyrannical to do do actually kill these with a little bit maybe higher priority not not like too much you don't want to like single target them or anything but cleaving onto them like aggressively rather than passively over like through the boss not cleave off of them to the boss but cleave off the boss to them i think is a good like good approach because you don't wanna you don't want them to leave this goo all over because things can get pretty hectic in this fight i i, I played this 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 one on on like some keys where things got out of control and you really don't want to see that it's pretty painful so yeah it's uh, not a good idea anyhow anyhow um just this boss pretty simple honestly yeah pretty simple as long as people don't die to frontal and things got really hectic towards the end here as you can see things got really ugly uh but in general it's not too hard of a boss to heal really it's you just need to heal grievous and you know people need to like not get hit by other things that it's as simple as so basically it's a dps boss for us here, this is very dangerous, by the way. The throw spear is nasty, nasty, nasty. It, it deals quite a bit of damage, and then you also will have these moments where you will have to move. Uh, and then there will be these mushrooms. And all of these things you need to keep uh, track of. Yeah, all, all of these things you will need to keep track of. Sorry. Uh, all of these things you need to keep track of. You just, got, you just want to make sure that uh, basically people don't get overlapped by spears. Obviously, don't die to mushrooms and don't die to this rot root burst or whatever it's called. We don't have poison dispel, so sadly we can't do anything about uh, that specific one. But uh, if you have a paladin or shaman or druid, uh, that shouldn't be too big of an issue. It's, it's honestly not that scary anyway. Do, do some passive damage, you know. It can overwhelm you, basically, is my point. So if it can be dispelled, dispel it, but you don't have to put like too crazy focus on it. Um, obviously just run from the, the shades, that's fine. Again, another Dryad. I think they decided to pull here, uh, with the, the trees and stuff. Yeah, I had, yeah, there it is, tank pulls. Avoid. They just, uh, Avoid. again, really just a DPS dungeon overall here. Not much to pay attention to. Keep person with poison up, as you can see. They're getting uh, chucked here. I do think this is a combination of Avoid. the spear Avoid. and poison. I'm not sure if poison itself will deal that much damage. Yeah, that, that guy died to root, by the way. So he just didn't dodge, or maybe he charged into the uh, the roots, the uproot. It happens. It happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. Avoid. So not much you can do about Avoid. that. Avoid. Yeah, basically, you know, just dodging. Honestly, these epics were pretty weak. I, I, I kind of wish I pushed a little bit more this week, but I, I got like overwhelmed by all the raids we had and some IRL stuff. These epics are pretty great, honestly, guys. Like, like, like volcanic spiteful. Volcanic is literally just move forehead lol, and then you have spiteful, which is just just run away lol. You know, I, I appreciate that they can screw you over in like a major way if you get unlucky, some overlaps and stuff. But these are just things you can usually plan for and. Uh, deal with uh, if you're you know aware Avoid. enough and yeah it's Avoid. hard to be aware for the full dungeon and always Avoid. anticipate it but uh, there are weak auras that can help with that i i used to have a great affix weak aura that i don't have anymore 
which would basically show, uh, tell me exactly when the quaking would happen and when the how many affixes there is when you have those ones that you need to like stun and dispel and stuff like that. But uh, I, I, sadly, I don't have it anymore. I need to find it again. It was really good. Maybe some of you know, so if you know, you can put it in the comments. Anyway, here we try to do the skip. Not try, I hopefully I think we'll succeed. I don't see a reason not to. You can also fade this, I'm pretty sure you can fade this, but uh, we decided to shroud through. Um, again, nothing too crazy. So I'm just gonna skip ahead. Avoid. You know, more blossoms, Avoid. more flowers, dodging. You know, root burst, just move lol. And another dryad, so that's all the same. I'm just skipping ahead. Uh, Nightmare Dwellers, basically you just need like a CC rotation for this, uh, it's, it's pretty dangerous but not super dangerous as long as you, you know, just interrupt and then you can use like AoE stops for these. Uh, I think even fear might work, I'm not 100% sure, let's, I guess we'll see. I might try to fear, that's why I'm getting close by the way, so, uh, you know, yeah there you go. Wait, did, did it work, by the way? Did fear work? Let me see. I don't think it did. So fear doesn't work, or it just, or it was maybe like DR'd by something else. But regardless, people just need to CC that, right? It's You're not gonna heal it if everything goes through and like if somebody gets overlapped by two of them, you're, that person is just gonna die. Um, and yeah, as a healer, as long as you have another res class, you should always be drinking when somebody dies. You should almost never be the one that reses. Unless, of course, you don't need mana. I mean, if you don't need mana, all the power to you, you know, go for it. But uh, I'm just saying, if you are not the only one that can res, make sure to drink up. Anyway, boss. The boss is, again, relatively simple. The main idea of the boss is to not get knocked into the roots. Leaving the roots also next to the boss helps, uh, because that will allow you to do the um, adds that the roots spawn much easier. There's like quite a few cool tech that you can do in this boss, such as uh, Hand of Freedom. If your paladin is playing double Hand of Freedom, you can basically freedom the person. And you can... Um, what do you call it? Yeah, you can just, with the freedom, you can run over roots and you can basically just, like, destroy them uh, that way. So that's, it's something you can do. I personally, again, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of these uh, cheesy, I mean, it's not cheesy, really. It's just using a mechanic, right? It's, like, unrooting yourself and then walking over them. It's nothing major, but I'm not the biggest fan of it because I, I do believe that it's unnecessary. I think adds also add, like, a nice little funnel option to the boss. Uh, through the saplings, and I don't think saplings themselves are too dangerous. Oh, maybe wait. tanks would disagree. <laughs> yeah, maybe tanks would disagree, but I think in terms of just pure DPS, it's kind of good to have that funnel onto the boss, so... Yeah. Frontal. Also, you can use, by the way, you can use Pain Sup when he casts the... Um, what's the ability called? The one that goes on the tank. Is that night? Is that nightmare oh, brat? We can take a look. Hold up. Frontal. Yeah, nightmare brat. Yeah, that's the one. It's like a big dot on the tank. Maybe if you remember, um, if you remember Vault from season one, Ar Arcane Vault or whatever it's called. Um, in that dungeon, there was a similar mechanic on the first boss where he would just like put this un really strong dot on the tank, and if you weren't like hardcore healing the tank and putting some externals on him, he would just like flop over. So basically, the, the same same story here. You know, just make sure the tank stays alive, and you're fine. Um, here. So there's this, uh, I think this is a disease on the tank, and it's pretty nasty. Mm, you can dispel that, but also you want to be careful because if you dispel it too early, it's just going to get reapplied. So you, you kind of want to like wait for a few stacks and then dispel. You just kind of have to get a feel for it yourself. You can also just uh, paint up if you have any remaining. Uh, dealing with these uh, bats is... Honestly, it's best to just kite them. It's, it's the bats that do that. Uh, I think this is like a... 
I would say this is a Corona reference, but it's not because this dungeon got made way before Corona. <laughs> and yeah, then we go back to the normal path. Not a lot of people play that on the right, by the way. That's that's a pretty, I would say, rare one. And here that frontal was really bad. Like, you never want to aim that frontal towards your range. That's just Tank being a little bit... Uh, he's a silly boy, you know. He's just being a little bit silly. And here I just got bursted down. So basically when these ads... Here, let's, let's look at that again. So as they die, they burst, yeah? So... They just go boom, 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 boom. So you want to stagger them. Or you want to use a major defensive. That's that's on me. I didn't use anything. I died. Um, ideally, you want to use something for that. Yeah, that, that was just like a little bit of an oversight on my part. You know, you want to, you know, you can flashlight yourself. You can... A desperate prayer. You can uh, fade. You can even put a barrier so everybody's protected. You can obviously paint up. Or you can just try to heal it as it happens. But yeah. And then, like, the worst thing about this dungeon is just these long, uh, long reruns. So I'm just gonna, like, skip this one. It's, you know, takes too long. Wait, what happened here? What, somebody died? Oh, somebody died to Welplings, yeah. Okay, and then we screwed our shroud over. So we're just waiting for the... Oh, I remember now I'm gonna, I'm gonna spawn Welplings as well. It is well playing, uh, well playing uh, kit boxes are kind of sus, not gonna lie. Blizzard, please uh, fix Blizzard. You know, they gotta get their janitors to fix this stuff, but yeah. Uh, no disrespect to janitors, and by the way. I, I have a huge respect for janitors in general. Uh, but it's just a joke from Valve. Uh, if you guys play Dota, you probably heard this. You know, there's like a running joke in Dota that the only person that handles like Dota balance is like one janitor that works at Valve. It's like an old school yeah. joke. So basically... The most dangerous part about this is obviously there's two parts. There's there's wind, and then there's this earth-shaking roar, which will basically knock some rocks uh, from the roof. I genuinely don't know how to deal with this mechanic. Uh, if, if you guys know, let me know, because I don't know if there's like any indicator who's going to get slapped. So you just kind of want to get spread, because if you're not spread, the potential is that you're all going to get clapped. It's pretty silly, honestly. I've seen like a better way to do this boss, by the way. I've seen pe what people do on high keys is they will intentionally pop some eggs on one side and then they will all stand next to next to the wall and they're all gonna get knocked but they're actually not getting pushed because they're at the wall so just intentionally doing like one side of the wall with whelplings and then all stacking there for the wind really would help healers but uh, you know in a pug especially in a 22 i don't expect people to do that and honestly it's fine without it one more thing you can do here is play ultimate penitence um yeah. if you want to I really do find that it's great for this boss because you can do one of these for free but in my opinion it's not worth it because it's like just once every four minutes so it really as cool as that ability is uh, it's a very unfortunate that the only way to make it like kind of like be competitive to other other abilities numerically is to invest three points into it because you also need to invest into two points on underneath it that reduce the cooldown through your and so that's honestly not worth it. At least not at the moment. Not with our current set that empowers Smite so hard. I can see here just some trash. We're just waiting for the double pull. We're waiting for the position. And here it goes. So this pull is very, very danger. Very danger. Danger imminent. Super danger. Mega danger. Uh, pretty hard pull. Um, there's like a lot of things that can go wrong, however, we kind of went full hardcore here, like everybody popped everything and the, the pack just melted. It's, uh, it's pretty... Sadly, not a lot of things happen here, so I can't even show you like what the, what the problematic things are, but... You have that circle, there's also a couple of casts that need, that need to be interrupted and stuff, so there's just like a lot of damage. Like, there isn't some philosophy or anything like that, you, people just need to interrupt and they need to like, uh, make sure they pop defensives if they're targeted by stuff. Um, here, honestly, the best threat for this is tank to just kite. Like, tank should literally not take a single hit here and just kite, and you, you guys just kill this. Obviously, you know, tank can... If tanks are brave, they can play this and, you know, test their, uh, test your might, you know, cue the Mortal Kombat music. Um, if you want to, you can do that. You can do, you know, it would contribute some damage and stuff with some defensives. And But yeah, if you just straight up tank this, you're gonna get too many of these diseases and you're just gonna bleed out um luckily like uh, paladin has been like on top of uh dispelling i think it's paladin that's dispelling yeah i'm not sure actually I, I i think he's the only one that can spell outside of me so um 
yeah, just very useful, useful thing to kind of do. And uh, here we failed the skip. We tried to skip this, but we didn't have shrouds. So basically, uh, DH tried to do like some sigil meld attack that I don't really understand personally. I don't get how it works, so I just tried to run where everybody else ran, and for some reason we pulled. Um, not really sure what any of this means, but yeah, as you can see, like Paladin was Paladin. Luckily, was smart and he went way ahead and he arrested us. And so, full focus on the boss fight here. And one thing I want to say, like about this boss fight, is this boss fight is it was giga scuffed because we are literally running like full melee comp and. Honestly, you need you kind of need two ranged for this to be cozy. Um, obviously, need is a strong word. You don't need anything. You can do this with literally five melees or or, or five ranged or whatever. If you find the ranged tank, you know finally that uh, you know evoker tank that people have been uh, coping about. But uh, the whole the whole gist of this is that waking nightmare. You need to stack with someone. You need one person to be in your circle. Otherwise, you're silenced. So that's very important that you don't get silenced during moments where you need to heal. When the boss hits 50%, he's gonna get really angry. But yeah, here, growing paranoia on Ringo, you know, you just kind of like wanna... You wanna move out of your party, you know, so you don't fear yourself and others. Um, very important. And it just kind of keeps growing. And then again, very important here, here I wanted to, to talk about this. See, when he hits 50%, you see he instantly starts casting up Apocalyptic Knight. When he's casting Apocalyptic Nye, it'll just start like like this explosion. It can like do a lot of damage if you're not careful. Luckily, we used the Humongous Darkness, and it did basically nothing. You can see me running back with like a Waking Nightmare. It's just like running, 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 because, you know, I have to dodge, and I also have to stay with the melee. So this is just like a very unnatural, you know, for a ranged player and also a, a ranged spec. It's a very unnatural movement that uh, you just have to deal with if you're playing in a comp like this. And then the difficulty starts to be when people get feared like this, yeah. So you see that guy got feared, so he's now away. But overall, honestly, pretty simple boss as long as you respect the mechanics and you do them properly. By the way, all of these circles, they kind of one-shot, so just make sure you're like on top of it. And I'm not sure why... I, I really feel like he kind of died a little bit too fast. I'm not sure what he got hit by, but if it's just a debuff, then that's fully on me. If it's not, then that's a combination, you know? But uh, as you can see, like, things start to get out of hand in Phase 2. It, things start to hurt way more. That's when the boss actually gets difficult, yeah, but wow. it's still very doable, right? It's still very doable. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, guys, for this key. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys uh, like the content. And I do try my best to kind of walk you through these dungeons that I'm doing. Again, disclaimer, these are not guides. This is not like tutorial or anything. I'm not trying to, you know, pretend here that I'm an expert or a guru or a disciplined priest or anything. But I've been playing it for, what, like five, six seasons now. Um... So I do, I do think that, you know, there are things that you can maybe learn and pick up from here, potentially. But yeah, thank you so much guys for watching and I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope, uh, you know, it was at least entertaining and somewhat educational. Much love to you guys. Feel free to like and subscribe to the video if you enjoy the content. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you in the next one.